Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Or actually, that's not quite right. Today we'll be talking about Halo for the first time in a little while. So I hope you guys enjoy. However, I'm probably going to annoy some of my Halo fans who have been waiting for an upload because today I'll actually be ripping on one of the largest and most powerful ships in the Halo universe. That is specifically the CSO class supercarrier. However, hopefully I can make it up for you guys at least a little bit with these nice models I've commissioned, which we'll be seeing some action in other videos. Anyway, my main gripes related to the CSO class supercarrier relate not to its power or its design from an in-universe standpoint, but just the fact that this ship is almost unbelievably lazy and stupid. But first, let's talk basics, and I'll give you guys a brief overview of the Covenant's largest and most powerful capital ship. The CSO class supercarrier is ginormous, almost 29 kilometers, which is a superstar destroyer and a half plus a little bit extra. It was the largest of the true Covenant capital ships, although smaller than some space stations like of course High Charity or the Unyielding Hierophant, and was armed to the absolute teeth with energy projectors and the other standard Covenant weaponry that you would expect on a large supercarrier. Because of its weaponry and carrying capacity, it was essentially an entire army and navy in and of itself. And one of these ships even, the Long Night of Solus, was dispatched to Reach in 2552, where it was surely meant to be a key part of the invasion. That ship was destroyed during Operation Uppercut with a modified slip space bomb, albeit at the cost of Spartan George's death. Before its destruction, the Long Night of Solace was seen as an existential threat to planet Reach. It was pounding away non-stop at the planet's surface, it was the main staging point for the invasion, it was refueling the other elements of the advanced fleet, and just basically represented the bulk of the Covenant's assets. George died thinking that the destruction of the CSO class supercarrier would save Reach. Unfortunately, the fleet of particular justice arrived right after it was destroyed and further subjugated the planet. So that all sounds pretty cool. What do I have against this ship? Well, my main problem is that the CSO supercarrier is just really dumb and really, really lazy. I'm okay with each faction having a ship or a few ships that are radically more powerful than the standard elements of their navy. We have the Super Star Destroyers in Star Wars being an obvious comparison. So it's really not that element of the supercarrier that bothers me. It's that the upsizing is made in a way that's just totally uninteresting and in a way that has no thought put to it. First of all, if you're going to make a mighty dreadnought for your new navy, it should at least be interesting. This is the most powerful ship at your disposal. From a viewer's perspective, you want it to be unique, you want it to be frightening, you want it to be instantly recognizable that this ship is incredibly powerful. I'm sorry for making so many Star Wars comparisons, but when the Executor is seen on screen for example, we have it eclipsing a symbol of the Empire, the Star Destroyer. What's more, the design is instantly recognizable. Although the SSD shares some common similarities with the Star Destroyer, particularly its general shape, it's obviously different, and you can tell it's different from any angle. The CSO, however, is the exact same as the CAS class, except just much larger and a different color. In fact, the asset in Halo Reach is simply a recolor of the Halo 3 asset. That game doesn't really distinguish between the two ship types. The length was only given in a later secondary sourcebook, so some have assumed that the ship was upsized in scale to make George's sacrifice ultimately be more important, and I think that that's definitely a possibility. But there's also a bit of weirdness when you just upsize a ship, if that is true. For example, everything on the CAS is upsized, including things like windows. So presumably the ship is now crewed by a very, very tall Covenant. Similarly, you have much, much more volume when it comes to transport and storage, and you have a lot more hangar space, but no additional hangar openings. I mean, the heart of this issue is the fact that the ship serves as a set piece, then later lore went in and gave some extra details. But I don't think it was done in a way that makes a whole lot of sense. But to sort of sum up my ideas on this particular topic, my point is that when you're making a monster flagship for your faction, it shouldn't just be an upsized version of an already existing ship. For one, it's hard to tell the difference, and you want your scariest ship to be unique. 
but it's also nonsensical. And you're wasting the opportunity to design something that's really, really cool. Also, looking at things from a Covenant point of view, I just don't see what the purpose of the CSO is. I mean, what can that ship do better than five CASs? I mean, yes, it can carry all the material to wage a war on a single planet, but surely it's not any cheaper to make these things than making five carriers, which also have the added benefit of being able to attack multiple places at once. Obviously, Covenant society is based very heavily on honor, so I would expect the largest capital ships like this to be led by the highest of the profits. But that's not what we see here. To me, this is a ship without any real purpose, which has probably suffered from some retcons, and that's likely why the CSO doesn't really appear in Halo lore besides for Halo Reach itself. The subline Transcendence is mentioned as another Covenant supercarrier, but the only real appearance in the Reach form is the Long Night of Solace. And I think it's basically been punished for being just really stupid. I know a lot of you guys do like the ship because it's so powerful, but look at it from a practical perspective. There are some people who hate this ship as much as I do, and one person in particular who hates it much more, and that's my friend Unikraken, who's lead dev on the Sins of the Prophets mod. And I asked him for a quote, and well, he delivered. I want to share with you guys some key points. The CSO is an absurdity at every level of its design. He states that people always ask him to put it into the mod, but every time we come to the same conclusion, the ship is too absurd to use in a way that would rationally translate to anything viable for a strategy game. The most glaring absurdity is that the ship is clearly just an upscaled assault carrier. The ship's model was ported from Halo 3 with all its imperfections and features into Halo Reach, then recolored to be more purple. Every visual feature on the ship's surface is upscaled as well, including her lights and windows. The ship, larger than many known moons, is cloaked for two weeks above reach, one of the UNSC's most important and busy military hubs surrounded by a full network of the most powerful orbital weapons the UNSC can field. When we spoke with the ship experts at 343, who obviously inherited this piece of lore from Bungie's time, they seemed equally flabbergasted about the ship and agreed that it seemed to be a poor choice. They noted that the ship was more akin to a battle station and would be vulnerable to coordinated attacks by many smaller vessels. Once the ship's shields were compromised at all, it could be destroyed fairly quickly with salvos of nuclear strikes. It would be unwieldy to maneuver in direct combat and would depend on a fleet for defense. As a note, he states something that I wanted to talk about in this video perfectly, which is basically that a ship of this size is touted for its ability to basically conquer a planet on its own, but is almost completely unwieldy. He finishes by saying a curious note on the game development side is that the assault carriers you see exit slipspace immediately after the CSO's destruction are a new model of the CAS created entirely for Halo Reach, and they featured a new modeled hull design with key difference from the two previously seen assault carriers in 2 and 3. He finishes by saying that pattern has yet to be named, but can be fielded by players in our mod, Sins of the Prophets. So I want to thank Uni for helping me out with this video. As a side note, I've been a fan of his mod since before I started YouTube, and he's known me for many years, long before my channel got popular. So I'll also link to his Twitter account down in the description. Go say hi to him and say X sent you. Also, his mod, Sins of the Prophets, is extraordinarily fun. It's incredibly dedicated to lore. It basically covers the nuances of the Human Covenant War, with UNSC playthroughs being extraordinarily difficult and requiring swarm tactics to beat even a single Covenant capital ship, but it's also amazing, and I'll link to that too in the description and in a pinned comment. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed my video on the CSO. What do you think? Do you agree? Are Uni and I being too harsh? Let me know all of that and more, as well as any Halo videos you'd like me to cover in the future. But guys, Guys, that's all I have for you today. Until next time, have a great one. Make sure you design new ship models, and as always, may the Force be with you.